Today's show is a little off the rocker, but we are going through all of the rookies, reviewing how they performed, what our expectations are going forward. It's a blast. Make sure you subscribe and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. What? Oh, man. Jason wasn't paying attention. That's why that happened. <laughs> that happened because I I was afraid of what Jason was going to type <laughs> and that it was going to uh, ruin the intro to the show. Oh. So somehow it made me forced. <laughs> so I ruined the intro to yes. the show. By you being way. afraid that I would ruin the yeah. intro to the show because of what I was typing. We were we we're here. We've got a show we're going to do. We're all excited for it. I hit the button. The show starts going. Then I just see you staring at your computer with a smirk. Well, we had a conversation before the show because yeah. we were talking about the Super Bowl still. Oh, that's and, it. And uh, <laughs> we were the, the, talking about the halftime show with, with Usher, which in my opinion was – fantastic you liked it we were having a huge dance party at my house and then a you know he had some guests come out and then he had a guest come out <laughs> in, in, in what i can only describe as some kind of pilgrim schoolboy <laughs> outfit and we were laughing about the because of course the internet saw that and had a good time and it then i was, it i remembered the starburst berries and cream commercial yeah we've been watching where where the 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 main actor gets very excited about the flavor of a starburst yeah it looks similar he gets very excited and, by the way that was not the only yeah and everyone thought it was CeeLo green but like miniaturized um you know who else had a very very entertaining whoops they noticed me moment right from the super bowl which jj watt no did you not catch J.J. Watt going back to his um, – Oh, not. yeah. The, the microphone? The hair. Oh, the, I the, okay. The blonde tips looking yes. like he's coming from the 90s. Yes. And he tweeted out, he said, you ever switch up your hair and wonder if anyone will notice? <laughs> and then he said, they notice. <laughs> and it's just yeah, picture with, after picture of – He went throwback. He went throwback. The messy – spiked yeah. hair with bleach tips yeah. i had that in high school <laughs> yeah yeah it's um <laughs> it's a look man it's a look oh but he handled goodness. it the right way oh my goodness we're sharing the pictures right now yeah so um there you go that's what we were laughing about welcome into the show yeah it's he's in uh o-town yeah it's um it's a look I, I can't imagine going through that conversation ahead of your super bowl coverage though well, you know, just, like just play it safe, man. Just probably the like, what it will now be have been the most viewed. Oh yeah, uh, program in American history. Oh man, and you're like this. I got a big plan for this. Yeah, it's it's a look, Jason. Maybe yeah, maybe I, you I, bring it back. I don't have his body to get away with his hair. If oh, I had okay. that hair, then I've got. I've got real problems in okay. my life. Um, <laughs> if you're JJ Watt, like if you yeah, if you are matter. a superhuman, just like you you were you were born and your work ethic have created this, just greater than everyone else human. You know, like if you're one of those dudes, you're a Hemsworth or whatever. You can do whatever you want. You uh, there's no, there is no haircut. <laughs> well, now now Guy Fieri just popped up in our which. It's looks, not that I mean, far off. Looks pretty similar. And to bring it all together, I don't know if you if you guys watched the the Puppy Bowl. No, no, no. My, I missed I missed that action. My, my kids were. I mean, nine in the morning. Dad, you gotta get get Max on. We're trying to watch the Puppy Bowl, and it was a huge deal. So they watched it, and then there all of a sudden out of nowhere, there was Guy Fieri. <laughs> Part of the see, how does he do this? I I don't know, but he he was talking about Flavor Town. That guy's got an empire. Um, this is a Thursday episode of the Fantasy Footballers. We welcome you in. We got a rookie review on today's 
show, some mailbag if we have time for it. Good quick question to dive into. Um, I see two hats and a bald head at Inducer's Alley, so we're not testing any new hairstyles out today. Have you Thankfully, about, although Kratos over there. Yeah, have you thought about just like bleaching? like oh, Bleaching your like, scalp? <laughs> parts of it, though. Just <laughs> so just, like if, there were, if they were tips. Just like look like a yeah. leopard? Just, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> We've got a rookie review, like I said, a reminder. You know, a reminder, ultimatedraftkit.com. Order by March 1st for a chance to win a listener league spot. Come play with us. In the listener league, it's the lowest possible price. Pick up the UDK Plus, get a bunch of bonuses, and uh, you get instant access to the Dynasty Pass. UltimateDraftKit.com. Yeah, we're doing real good today. <laughs> it, it's definitely, definitely the off uh, preseason, 2024 yeah, preseason. Yeah. We're we're uh, we're ready uh, for this show. <laughs> we're super super here with you. Thank you. Uh, follow us on X at the FDF. <laughs> um, yeah, follow us. All yeah, right. We're somewhere. You, you know where we Here's are. Here's the quick question. It's a dynasty question. Comes in from YouTube. How do you maximize the value of rookie draft picks? Do you trade them at the draft? Do you make the picks? and trade them on off-season hype, right? Like every rookie hasn't played. They could be great. Mm -hmm. Or just keep the rookies on your team and hope they live up to their potential. I've got two, I've got two go big answers for, for me personally. One is the, the life cycle of the value of a rookie pick. We've talked about this before, but it really changes. I mean, in the middle of a season, when games are being played and, you know, your start-sit decisions are what's on your mind, rookie picks do not have that much value. Uh, the, people don't care that much about the their rookie pick. So if you, wanna, if you want to trade for a rookie pick, that's the time of the year that you want to do it. It's not going to cost you an arm and a leg uh, to acquire a first-rounder, whereas when you get near – <laughs> when you get near, I can't look at my screen because you. <laughs> this, 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 this is this is so this wonderful. Is, I don't know what's happening. This is happening. the worst podcast we have ever done. Yes, without a doubt. And I blame other people. <laughs> We're our our slack. I'm sitting here trying. I'm trying, trying to, just, to be a normal to say the point and and not and look I'm, at my monitor, but I can see listen. all these pictures popping into our show doc as we are communicating here. And you two, the camera was just on I'm me. I'm sorry. So you couldn't see, but you two are just cracking up to okay. my sides. So, so we are, we are uh, we're, we're actually in Vegas right now for the FSGA uh, conference. So we are recording a little bit early. If you noticed a strange tweet from Andy on Monday afternoon, that's what we're laughing at. <laughs> Wait a minute, Andy <laughs> tweeted this out? <laughs> what? what? You tweeted that? Oh, this is this is a long oh. a long con joke. Wow. Well okay. go go back so, uh go back to Monday's yeah. go check uh, that out. timeline and see see what's So going I on. I don't know anything that Jason said, but my answer <laughs> is uh rookie picks peak in value right before the trade deadline for Contenders to come and in, in, and uh, you know make moves, and then at the NFL draft, that's when people are the most excited and landing spots are happening. So it's kind of in real time you can see them going up. So if you're trying, the honest truth is, if you're trying to maximize the value of the of a rookie pick, if you don't have like the 101 or the 102, is probably trading it because it's always rookie picks are always. What's in the box? It could be a boat instead of getting a player who you know is in a good situation and they're a good player right now. Because when you hear rookie, you're like, oh, 10 years on my dynasty team, this guy's going to be a stalwart blue chip player for me. And the truth is that's just – that so rarely happens. What What is difficult is that – we've talked about it before. There's a pressure sometimes to, like, follow a consensus too with rookie drafts. Mm-hmm. And so if you don't have like super strong conviction about a player, that is even more in that what, you know, the advice that Mike just gave. If you're really, you know, if you really, 
you know, C- let's say last year C.J. Stroud would be an example, right? Sure. And you you want to go after C.J. Stroud because you believe in him, like, great. But I have seen a lot of people take players that they don't want to take because they think that they they this is the consensus Dude, number four pick and you shouldn't do it. Quentin Johnston was that player last year where all the I mean things that are true signal for the odds that this player is going to hit are first round pick. Quentin Johnston had that a pedigree. I mean, he kind of disappeared in the national championship game, but but he was in the national. But he was in the national game. championship game. He had a monster season uh, production, and then the Chargers drafted him. He was immediately linked to Justin Herbert for five years, and the excitement of that landing spot is extremely hard to to look away or to toward or to shake that off even if he he felt like you know like there's still there's a lot of red flags about Quinn Johnston but the draft capital and the spot made it so appealing and you know we, we make there's been so many jokes about huge he he honestly could turn it around just the odds are historically the odds are now against him well we're gonna be but, talking about him yeah on yeah this yeah we absolutely will but that's the point what of Andy was saying of the consensus if you were in that 105 to 107 range it's like you're you're probably drafting Quinn Johnston I did I was guilty of it because it's those because some things are just so appealing of the unknown versus well you had I had I shopped I could have shopped the pick I didn't I made the pick immediately look it's just like the same thing happens at the NFL level right you know if you shoot your shot and you change the order of what people think and you miss that, or the player you passed on in Cuge, you pass on Cuge because the conviction he blows up. Those emotions yep. get wrapped up into it. Um, the other thing that I would recommend, so that the, the, the timeline and and it is one thing. The reality that veterans are probably a better asset than than the potential rookies when you just factor in complete bust rate. Um, and then the, the third thing is. And and we're here to try to help you with this. You're listening right now. You probably are the people doing what I'm about to say, um, and, and especially with our Dynasty podcast, if you're listening there. But it is when you get an earlier look into the upcoming draft class, it, not everybody learns on the same day how many players are great. And the earlier you get in and have an expectation of this upcoming draft class, you're just more ahead of the game. If you, you know, like right now, we were going through um, some potential trades on on some episode, and you know we realized that there's there's a big three wide receivers. There's a lot of good wide receivers this year, right? Um, but there's like three potential, seemingly previous to destinations, like superstar Marvin Harrison Jr., um, Roma Dunze, and and uh, Malik, Malik Neighbors. Neighbors. Yep, yeah. those three guys are a cut above, and that's not to say that the next one is going to be bad, but it is to say that's a tear break. When you're actually looking at the value of actual picks, you know it's not, the 105 isn't always worth the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, some years that might be an incredible pick. Some years that might be like, man, I really wish I had a top four pick because that's where the break is. So just getting in earlier on that expectation, I think, is is how you maximize those picks. Yeah, and uh, you can see all of the team opportunity pages too in the Dynasty Pass to see what teams are. Uh, have maybe the biggest opportunity for a rookie to make an impact in year one uh, in the UDK plus. All right. We uh, we're going to dig into some of last year's rookie class. I mean, it's perfect. We've been talking about huge already. So let's jump in. Rookie review. All right. Uh, we are looking at last year's rookie class today and, and who can maybe step up and make a huge difference in fantasy football next season. When you start at the quarterback position, you don't get to start with the best story. <laughs> you get to start with the worst one. And I think there are some reasonable excuses that you could hand this quarterback however when you're taking it 101 talking about Bryce Young Carolina's rookie where they just traded away their future you know they traded away the pick that ends up this year's number one for Chicago it was as bad as it really can get 
for Bryce Young. Among 44 first-round quarterbacks with nine-plus starts. So that's a that's a lot, 44 of them. His 2.1% touchdown rate is the fourth worst. It's fair to say he did not have anything close to elite weapons, right? I mean, this sure. is um, – Hey, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, I, I, I think you could actually argue against that narrative because I, I know you, when, when you're looking at Bryce Young, there are plenty of excuses you can make. One of them is the wide receiver core. And going into this season, I, th I think if we looked at – what these teams, the 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 Carolina Panthers and the Houston Texans, had available as weapons, what they had done to give their incoming rookie uh, receivers, I think we probably would have been on the Carolina side. A big contract for Adam Thielen, a veteran. Uh, they spent uh, a high uh, draft pick, higher than than Tank Dell's draft pick, sure. on Jonathan Mingo. You know, it's like. In hindsight, now it's like, well, Nico Collins and Tank Dell, they're awesome. But it's like, that wasn't how it, Tank Dell was viewed. You know, that's, Okay, I, I think that's yeah. fair. I mean, yeah. They gave maybe. Miles Sanders a bunch of money. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess they added Schultz in, in Houston, but it's, it's not that different. It's not that different. But, you know, you, you lost a head coach. Frank Reich was brought in to be the quarterback whisperer, and they lost him in the middle of the year. Um, Hayden Hurst came out and said he believed that Bryce Young had too many voices in his ear. Um, it's hard when you do have a lot of change, when you don't have um, – I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if he can redeem it. Like we've seen quarterbacks that are drafted this high and there's a shell shocking that happens the first season and, and they're not the same. Yeah, the, the best example of overcoming it that I can remember is Trevor Lawrence, who his rookie season was abysmally bad. Uh, it looked like uh, some of the numbers that he that he had were numbers you didn't think you would really bounce back from, but he had the Urban Meyer crazy, insane organizational struggles there. They had the quarter. Which is, I mean, yeah, and so you can. I mean, that's similar. You lose a quarterback after one year, right? Or even your head coach. coach. Yeah. I, second lowest PFF grade under pressure, but was under pressure 42% of the time. Didn't have separators on the outside. Didn't flash a lot. Had opportunities to make plays, didn't make them. It will be hard to trust any wide receiver in Carolina for a while. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I, you know, you've got to, you've got to make your call on players on what you believe in them when you're playing fantasy. Uh, the reasonable take here is to say that Bryce Young still has a chance to be good, but if you have to make your call on whether that will happen or not, so that you can trade for him or trade him away or or you know bypass him in a startup draft or draft him, I, I do not think it's going to happen for Bryce Young. Trevor Lawrence still hasn't been that great as a one on one bouncing back, and he has actual traits and things. He's got a. a you know, a great athleticism, a rocket arm, uh, things that Bryce Young just doesn't have. What Bryce Young was supposed to have is incredible accuracy and just the intellect of seeing the field. And those things didn't happen in year one. When we were doing the uh, our Dynasty startup rankings, which you can grab in the UDK Plus, I had a really difficult time with Bryce Young because it's – this feels very Zach Wilson, where rookie year, you can wa watch Zach Wilson. It was it. This isn't going to work. Like this will not work. But, but then trying not to be too quick to bury the number one overall pick with Zach Wilson. I he wasn't. I get it. But, he, he, like Jason, I think you're saying of you got to make the call because right now he's in startup. He is number nineteen for us. And I, I don't. Is that being just too cautious and saying no? You just we gotta dump it, move on, move on for fantasy. I always want to see flashes like we did with Lawrence, even in his bad season. Like I we did with Will Levis this last year. Correct. Yeah. Which will I mean? C.J. Stroud, Anthony Richardson, Will Levis are the next three names we'll talk about here, reviewing the quarterback position. I mean, you go from the lowest of lows in Bryce Young, the contrast. 
between Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud is so profound that, like, on a normal year, you know, if you took C.J. Stroud out of the picture, okay, Bryce Young struggled. Anthony Richardson got hurt quick. Not a factor. Will Levis flashed a little bit. Wasn't good after that. Like, Bryce Young in that landscape, we're not – it doesn't feel as bad. Carolina fans aren't, you know, as angry. But C.J. Stroud put up a top 12 fantasy performance, one of the best rookie quarterback performances ever. He supported two top 15 wide receivers in PPR leagues, or rather in points, points per, per game, game and PPR leagues. But Collins was the wide receiver six. Tank Dell was 15. And he impressed on every, every single game, mm -hmm. even when he didn't win, even when he had uh, struggles moving the ball, there would be a drive here or a drive there where he made a play, escaping the pocket, um, getting away from pressure, throwing on the run, uh, throwing back across his body sometimes, uh, showing the arm strength downfield. Accuracy was there for him on the move. I mean, I can remember Bryce Young blatantly missing – Jonathan Mingo on a couple of there wasn't pressure right. in his face. He stepped up, he threw it, overthrew him. This didn't happen to Stroud very often. And, you know, he threw the ball a ton. He led the league in yardage. This was the contrast is so vast. Yeah, I'm I'm curious. I don't have your guys' rankings pulled up, but like Will Levis or Bryce Young, who do you have who would you rather I'd still go Bryce. I, I'm on no. the Will Levis side for fantasy purposes. Okay. Uh, the the, the draft capital will obviously give Bryce Young many years of being allowed to try. For uh, Is this for startup? Yeah, if you were startup dynasty. Yeah, I'd, I'd still bet on Bryce. But I'd, I, that, I think I have I Bryce higher. I, I could think be I have stuck Bryce. in his first overall pick. Yeah, I've got Bryce higher. And I, I just feel like there's more security there. New head coach coming into Tennessee – Levis could fall out of favor quick and you never mm -hmm. see him again. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's close. Um, Richardson, we only got to see him for four games. I know Mike has been uh, an early adopter, an just, early member of the fan club. Just excited about how awesome it was for fantasy of what we saw in, in the brief appearances. Again, the shoulder industry – or industry – injury <laughs> – the, the shoulder industry is booming yeah, right now. From, especially from him when they had to repair his throwing shoulder. So that, that that shouldn't be taken lightly. But I did see him throwing though. But yeah, but this, we'll see some real NFL throw, NFL throws here soon. But it's not a lot of games. That's the truth. And yes, like, it is not. You know, you you played a, Jacksonville was one of the big games, and the Rams were the other big game. So as and the Rams had a ton of young defensive players that didn't do anything until the second half of the year. That's my only hesitation. Is it's like you had two games. Yeah, and. Yeah, I I don't mind that at all. I don't mind people being hesitant, but in full games, we saw ten carries in each of those full games. QB four, QB two. That's what's exciting. Where C.J. Stroud, I I think will easily be the best, the better of real life quarterback over Anthony Richardson. But with the pace of play that the Colts put up, which they still kept doing it with Gardner Minshew under center, and him running. I I'm making the presumption that Michael Pittman will be back. That could be at my own peril, but that's how I see it happening. And Richardson was and I think can be a real impact player where Stroud will be in that Joe Burrow camp where sometimes he's going to go out there in games and he's going to have 300 yards and three touchdowns and it's going to feel like you're at the top of the world and then there'll be games where he's at 250 and 1 where Anthony Richardson as long as he's giving if he's giving you 10 carries every single game he's going to be he will be an actual difference maker for fantasy yeah i think i think the question will be what what is richardson's tier of if he's a running quarterback are you are you going to the ceiling level of lamar jackson from a few years back are you getting uh, Justin Fields, where he's not as effective in the passing game, so he, the variability is higher, but when it's good, it's really good. I think those are all questions we'll get answered, and we have a lot of confidence in the offense, the head coach, um, pace of play, 
athleticism. Yeah, I mean, the injuries are a problem. I mean, they could be. They, they could, could be a problem. They could also be a great – this could be a Henry Rowan Garter situation <laughs> where uh, this so, – you know, his throwing accuracy wasn't his strong suit. Now he gets this shoulder – That's this, good analysis. From the shoulder yeah. industry. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Building up a brand new – a brand new shoulder for but him. And people are real big fans of this tweet. Oh, real, oh, real um, big fans. The tweet the, from last Monday. Um, the tweet from earlier this week. Yes. So the what we saw of Richardson was actually, and you can rewind the clock. I'm not running from it. I was very hesitant on Richardson making the transition to be a professional quarterback. Like I was the most outspoken of the show. I didn't think That's it was fair. Gonna, I didn't think it was going to work. But then his first game. Yeah, he's playing Jacksonville, but he's playing a professional football team. He throws the ball 37 times. He completes 65% of his passes. Then the the on the next full game, 25 attempts, only completed 44%. So that was kind of the Richardson on tape of incredible play that few quarterbacks can make, then just absolute boneheaded mistake of how did you airmail that ball. But it's it's Richardson is risky business. But I think the reward is actual game-changing quarterback the way that Josh Allen is a game-changing quarterback where C.J. Stroud will be really solid. But I think you know I don't I, you don't see a top three or I don't see a top three finish possible for Stroud unless everyone gets hurt, which that can happen. All right, let's take a quick break. Come back with the running backs. All right, let's jump into the 2023 rookie running back review. We had three rookie running backs finish inside the top 24 this year. That would be Bijan, Gibbs, and Achan. Mm -hmm. At least two have finished inside the top 24 every single year since 2012. That's a long run. And I know, Jason, at the top here, before we break down these names, I know you're not overly enthusiastic about the draft class. Jonathan Brooks, Braylon Allen... Um, I know you guys like Benson, Trey mm -hmm. Benson, but these could be picks that, that happened in the second or third or, or, you know, first pick could be third round for all we know for running backs. It'll be interesting to see how we project two finishing in that, you know, which yeah, two could point. be in that top 24. Yeah. I mean, the, it, it will happen again. It happens every year, <clears throat> whether it's the guys you expect or not. Like I remember 2014 that I believe that was the Bishop. Sankey year uh where oh. you know the top end was really really bad but you still had guys that came like undrafted Isaiah Crowell and you know you, you just never know where it's going to come from but rookie running backs are a good investment in fantasy in their first season uh and you know we'll continue advocating for you to draft rookie running backs it doesn't always work out uh you know Zach Charbonnet was clearly and utterly behind Kenneth Walker. But at the same time, it, we're just looking at hit rates and good bets to make. Rookie running backs are usually so, a, a solid bet. Let's start there because, I mean, we talked extensively about Bijan and Jameer Gibbs on the running back truth episodes because of where they finished the RB9 and 10. So we know, I, I think everybody out there who played fantasy this year, this year knows what Bijan was about, knows the limited opportunities, we're all looking forward to the fact that his head coach brought his name up first and foremost in the players he's looking forward to coaching and giving opportunities to. Although if you watch Bijan react to that, first thing he does is bring up Tyler Algier. Just so you Stop it, so you Bijan. Know. But Jameer Gibbs as well took over in the second half of the year, was the RB three from week six seven through sixteen. But I do want to get your like your you know, your one year mark on Zach Charbonnet because this was a player that both of you guys were just yeah, we like in him. love with yeah. mm -hmm. the play. Um, he didn't have a ton of opportunities uh, at all. I mean, this was Kenneth Walker's backfield. He had seven point eight opportunities per game. It was a ninth round pick that we thought, hey, maybe maybe you get to do what Kenneth Walker did a few years ago and and make a huge mark on a fantasy team. It didn't happen, and uh, you kept waiting for it. So, what's your, you know, where are you with Charbonnet? Uh, it, it certainly is is a bad look going forward in the sense that you've got a new coaching staff that didn't necessarily go out there and participate in the second round draft capital that they gave up for Zach Charbonnet Walker dominated the first season. So I don't 
I don't think I've changed much on my belief in the talent of Charbonnet. Um, you know, he had the one week where, you know, or a couple of weeks where yeah, he, he had two weeks where he was 85 or more percent of the snaps. Yeah, exactly. And, and during this stretch where Kenneth Walker was gone, he was a, uh, you know, a, a running back two or better uh, in two of those. So I, I think the talent is there, but I don't expect him to get opportunities to be very relevant. Um, is this Kenneth a player Walker established in year two that like he is the star of that of that running back room? We know Pete Carroll where his focus was oftentimes on this team. Will Zach Charbonnet be drafted? later than he was this past year. He was a ninth-round draft pick. I imagine he will go later. I definitely think he'll go later, yeah. Because agree. at the time, there was unknown upside. I mean, thankfully— So he's it, being drafted as a pure insurance running back. Yeah, I think I think so. And and thankfully, this last year didn't cost you much. I mean, a ninth-round pick, most of the ninth round is going to be burnt anyways, uh, so I don't mind taking the shot on him. But, yeah, he'll, he'll be— a double digit round player. I, I actually think the guy who was drafted after him now is the better bet to make uh in Kendra Miller, who did also show a lot of flashes, but didn't he just wasn't healthy. He didn't have the opportunities and Jamal Williams is I mean, he just seems like he's done. Yeah, I would I would not I don't know if a lot of flashes is the word I'd use for how limited his season was, but at the end of the year, he definitely well, percentage wise, right? Too. That's, that's <laughs> what I mean. Like <laughs> he didn't get very many opportunities and yet you still saw some nice plays 13 when... for 73 and a touchdown in week 18. Uh, I believe he had a highlight real preseason catch. He did. So bookending the season yes. with a few uh, big plays. I am intrigued at the kind of opportunity he might get next year. Camara was great in the passing game again, but he was not great on the ground. And so you could see that split up a little bit. I think I think it's a gamble. I mean, I think I think it just comes down to what the expectation is for the team in Camara. He's got two years left on his contract and a cap hit of twenty nine million in twenty twenty five. So I doubt he hits that if he plays that season. The I would agree with Jason in like this upcoming year. Between the two of them, it certainly feels like Kendra Miller is more likely to get just naturally get more work, get played in. He has the older running back in front of him who the um, I mean, you know, guys never want to leave the field, but I'm sure Alvin Kamara would be like, Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll take a rest here or there. Where Kenneth Walker is still young enough that you can put him on the field all the time, and in, in, in or all the time, and you know have the gas tank to do it. What will this Saints team be? Is difficult, but I I still believe in Kendry Miller, the talent. Um, you know that final week, the final uh, one. It's one play, but again, one play out of uh, what? How many carries did Kendry Miller actually get? Forty or something. Forty, forty-one. But it was you know a great touchdown run where he essentially broke five the equivalent of five tackles of juked a few guys and then carried a couple guys into the end zone it was just nice to see where I don't know that I don't I can't even think of like a Charbonnet play where it was oh there he is there's the guy who I was scouting as a college running back how many times in 13 games did Alvin Kamara rush over 70 yards zero one one game yeah eat it loser oh man <laughs> one game such a loser <laughs> He had uh, he was three point nine a carry, one game over seventy yards. Man, um, you know three point nine is not the end of the world if you're bringing what you did in with seventy five receptions. But let me ask you this: How many games did Kendra Miller rush for more than seventy yards? One, one, one. <laughs> yeah. So I I do see the possibility of that backfield maybe transforming sooner. Yeah, yeah. The the age of Camara mixed with the washed nature of Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams still had 126 um, opportunities, so I, I don't think he stays ahead of him on the depth chart. A lot of people want to know what to expect from Tajay Spears. I'm one of them. Third round pick. <laughs> finishes the RB35. 100 you want, carries. You want to know what to expect? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, I wanna, you, I, so you're the right man for this job. I mean, look, you you don't anticipate Derrick Henry's going to be back. And 52 
receptions last year. Yeah, he he's uh, a very good uh, receiving back. They have no one else there on the depth chart, so we'll see what they do this offseason. But you could have a situation where he is just the guy. Feels a little like we were waiting for Rashad White not That's, to have the job. That is exactly the name. But we all expected Tampa to get a running back. They Bring back Fournette. Take one in the draft. Take one in free agency. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. As of, of the receptions, Tajay is one of 15 running backs, rookie running backs since 2013 with 50 or more receptions. And that was kind of like one of those highlight stats for Rashad White saying it, it, it might be a value in the draft. It, whether or not he is a – a good player, which I think Tajay Spears is is a good running back. He just he has a a knee problem, so long term it's not great. But if the, he they already trusted him, like this guy was out there, fifty plus or more percent of the snaps in twelve of seventeen games. You know, four point five yards per carry, over fifty receptions as a rookie. It it's really good, you know, really good signal here that Tajay Spears if he gets the job that. He'll be all right for fantasy. The team at a team level, it's going to be rough. And but that might lend itself to help him even more. It could as a pass catching back. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah. no Vrabel, no Henry to, and quarterback situation is a mess. I mean, yeah. How many, how many rushing touchdowns did Derrick Henry have? I'm going to pull that up. Real more quick. than two. Well, I look. I don't. I wouldn't be 12. betting on that. Yep. Twelve. But I'm, no, I'm just saying of like, if in this current season there was plenty of those touchdowns that that Spears could have converted. I think that's your ceiling. Your ceiling would be a Rashad White type of season. Well, that would be an incredible ceiling. Yeah, I mean, but it's it's possible if he was the only guy there. Your floor is bad. Yes. Your floor is they draft somebody, they bring somebody in, the offensive philosophy changes, the team never scores any touchdowns. Um, Tajay Spears is is the Michael Carter. That that would be your that's that's your bad scenario. Yeah, because Michael Carter had a pretty okay rookie season and yeah. You know, the Jets are the Jets. And, and so And usually you want to bet against sub two hundred pound running backs. Tajay Spears not a big guy. So, you know, you, you would expect them to say, Oh, maybe this he's a good complimentary back. But if he was the plan to succeed Derrick Henry um in, in the short term, he'll be great. And you've got to you've got to make that bet because it's uh very risky. The the floor is low, the ceiling is high. I'm betting on Tajay Spears. I I liked enough of what I saw both in the NFL scouting time and on the field where I'm I'm in on Tajay. If I could trade him in a dynasty, I would. So you I, would try to capitalize. I would try to capitalize on him being alone right now. Sure. I mean, yeah, be, long term. I'm pretty I was, afraid. I was speaking more in redraft of like if this coming alone. season, how do I view him? Because Mike is right. If you're talking dynasty, he still has the concerns of his longevity with his knee. He, he's going to burn bright. And then probably be a light that goes out. Devon A. Chan. It's quite the quite the story. It was a fun story. It was a it was a weird one. <laughs> um Lightning Bolt, you know, hundred carries, eight hundred yards, eight touchdowns. Those numbers don't really make sense together. Seven. Like a hundred carries shouldn't be eight hundred yards. Seven point eight yards per carry. Uh thirty seven <laughs> targets, twenty seven catches, three touchdowns through the receiving game, so he was double digits, but missed multiple times this year with injury. Um, you know, we knew that the the end couldn't be as good as the beginning was for the season. The first three, you know, three, four, five weeks, three, four, five were amazing. Slowed down a little bit, right? If he didn't hit the big play, you were disappointed. Yeah, but he hit the big play a lot looking at this, you know, long run of the game, 67 yards, 55 yards, 76 yards, 45 yards he had a lot of home runs and that's just that's the ability that he has and and also matched with this specific offense and the system McDaniel and the speed of of Waddle and Tyreek it's just really really hard to always be able to bottle up a player like this but even without those big giant breakaway plays it seemed like most times he touched the ball was just like guys couldn't get to him fast enough and at his current age he's 22 years old I, I I think you know you're you're not yet to his prime so uh, I am in love <laughs> okay so we've we've got a sliding scale Mike there is 
love okay on one end of it um i you know he, I did, he didn't read any of the the lower weeks in terms of production um uh, which he did have but we all know he's one play away i most will be back what round is is hn drafted in this coming season Third, third, yeah. third, yeah, around the two, second, third, <laughs> two, three turn. I don't. Uh, my, here's my one comma. I wouldn't want H N as my as my running back one. That's my that's my thought. Not the archetype that I want for my RB one. I don't want a player that can go out there and get seven carries, nine carries, seven carries in a game, eight carries in a game. Not not my. Now I'm not saying I wouldn't want him as my two. That'd be awesome. Little freaked out as my one. Yeah, I would love him as my fourth. All right. Even better. You're real funny. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, how are you going to do that? I'll trade trade for a lot of running backs. Oh. <laughs> he's just he's I just, thought there was like a He's secret, just making fun of the fact that I'm like plan. if you could pick your perfect world. Yeah. I think you're going to have to take him. I mean, if you go RBRB, you can be your two. There you go. Yeah. There's your world. I'm in though. I'm in with Jason. So, he finished at uh What was he in points per game? Oh, I'm trying to figure get that it out. for you. I uh, I he'll be a good he'll be a good discussion next year, but it's players that have those kind of breakaway want, runs. You know, is he C, is he Chris Johnson? Right. Um, is he C.J. Spiller? Is he Javid Best? That'll well, be interesting. He was fourth in points per game, behind his teammate Raheem Mostert. Uh, Raheem Mostert was third at seventeen points per game. Devon Achan was sixteen point one points per game. And while, yes, that does include the 49-point explosion, it also includes two games where he scored one fantasy point. I think it'd be fair to say 7.8 per carry is not going to happen, right? I'm right. not sure why you'd say that. <laughs> but after that run, he was at 5.3, and that can happen. 5.3 is mm -hmm. Jamal Charles, right? Oof. Which is a good comp for him. Yeah, if he can stay healthy, too. that That's the risk is... It's not. It wasn't a good season that way. Preseason, two in-season injuries. That doesn't concern you for your uh, love. It, I mean, it it concerns me a little bit because break of your his, heart because of his size. But at the same time, it's like uh, every single one of these players can get hurt. Nick Chubb's a big bruising back and unfortunately got hurt. Christian McCaffrey spent two years just being an injury prone. You you can't ever rely on him. He's great when he's on the field, but he's injured. I'm not taking him with the one on one to like not missing any time and getting, you know, leading the NFL and in, in rushing and being up there and carry. So, I mean, obviously different body, like the, that the, sounds like a guy with some love glasses on. <laughs> this is a five, 980 pound I, running back that you just compared to McCaffrey and Chubb. I'm, I mean, no, yes, anybody I, can get hurt on any play, but come on. Well, the, I, he's I, not, he's not built to get 20 carries a game. I that archetype will not happen. I let it off with saying, his size concerns me a little bit with the injuries. I mean, that was that was the knock coming in. Is is he big enough? And what was yeah? I mean, what was the answer? The answer was he was awesome. I mean, that, that, to to me that that was my takeaway from this season. You, if you said was Devon A. Chan, yeah, he was. He good. was awesome. Yeah, he he was very good. He was. All right, Tank Bigsby wasn't. <laughs> oh man, oh Tank Bigsby. So what? if you if you came into the season happened? and you expected. Uh, Tank Bigsby or, or Sean Tucker to do anything or to disrupt the people in front of them, you were misdirected. These were not like the team thought he was going to. Uh, the Jack Jacksonville? No, no, I, I don't. Well, I don't I mean, know they, about that. Because well, I, I was a third. That's, I think, that's what, point. yeah, that's what I'm saying is drafting a running back in the on day two. Well, I mean, Charbonnet was a day two, uh, was a second round pick, mm -hmm. right? Those, and didn't get a lot of opportunity. No, but I, I, I don't know that I've ever seen, outside of, like, Kadarius Tony. I don't know if I've seen a player hurt their team more than Tank Bigsby. It was like when he got in the game, he just fumbled it right to the other team. It was like he, he might as well just hand the ball over. He did it so many times. He'd get down to the goal line. They'd finally give him an opportunity. It was like mistake or after a tip, mistake. A tip pass. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't always like it won't show up on the box yeah, score yeah. always, but – Eventually, they just said, it's "Like that interception, that was on Trevor." <laughs> so he had he had um, he had fifty carries. He averaged two point six yards on those fifty carries. Ooh, impressive. He had one that. reception, and I remember a lot of 
talk about Mr. Hands over there. Yeah, I mean this is so this is this is not good. This was no, this a, was a disaster. Yeah, it's a disaster that feels like it almost makes Travis Etienne feel even safer next year. Probably is because you're like, well, we just spent a third on a running back. How can we? It not that teams won't because the Rams have shown that they will do that over and over, but. I, I can't imagine it's it's hard to see a, a day two pick coming in at running back for Jacksonville. Yeah, and obviously Etienne's a, a first round guy, so that's it's, it's a wild season. I think we all, even our our the least bullish Tank Bigsby person was shocked by the lack of success. Yeah. One hundred. And had he been able to come out and have success early, he probably would have earned that role. But it just it just all went sideways. And he dominated in preseason too. It was like everything was looking good. Well, and you ended up getting much more work for like Dearness. Johnson and and other backs than yeah. Tank Bigsby because having Tank on the field was a negative for your team. Stank Bigsby, yeah, it was yeah. this year. Yeah, got yeah. him. Yeah, that's not a good nickname. We don't want that. He earned it though. Okay, I mean you you know you get what you deserve. Hey, Stank, <laughs> get over here. Last one we'll talk about at running back is Roshan Johnson, who had opportunities this year. Um, Eighty one for three fifty two and two forty targets. 34 receptions. That backfield is up in the air. Mm -hmm. I would certainly rather have Roshan than Tank Bigsby moving forward. What about him versus Kendra Miller and the opportunities you see for both of them? There's, That's a really interesting comp because there's no world where Kendra Miller usurps Alvin Kamara as the starter and just becomes like, hey, you are the running back one for this team. Whereas Roshan could easily be the lead back next season. Um, you know, there's a lot of question marks in Chicago. I don't think we have enough information right now in February to say who is going to be. We don't know the quarterback. We don't know this running back room. They ended up hating Deonta Foreman after good performances yeah something weird happened. that was super weird so we don't, we don't know but what I do like about Roshan is that there isn't already someone spectacular ahead of him and he did show flashes from time to time where it was like okay that was the, that was a good NFL game well, Herbert will be there I'm not I'm not saying you're wrong saying that Cleo Herbert isn't sensational but Cleo like basically everything you just said about Roshan you could say the exact thing about it, about Cleo Herbert 100 percent. I'm just saying that's not Alvin Kamara level. It's to more overcome. like yeah, it's more like Ty Chandler and um, Madison. Yeah, going yeah. into a season where both guys have an opportunity, they could secure the favor of the team. Roshan was good through the air, um, four point three a carry. It you know didn't see a ton of him, but um, we'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk about wide receivers. All right, let's jump in here. Rookie wide receivers. This was um it was an interesting year. You had we've had an average of three point seven rookie wide receivers per year finish in the top thirty six for fantasy. Um this past year we had Zay Flowers, Rashi Rice, Jaden Reed, Jordan Addison, and then of course Puka Nakua. Mm. Who, oh, I love him. You see, you love is in the air. Those two guys, man. Puka and H. N. Maybe, maybe it's because I drafted them. Uh, yeah, I think it might be because you drafted them. <laughs> I think maybe that does have something to do with it. Yeah. Um, Jackson Smith and Jigbo was the first off the board. A lot of people were bemoaning the fact that he went to Seattle. Um, yeah. In part because you were like, oh, they just got another great weapon, but also. What does this mean for Metcalf? Lock it. Uh, he he only had fifty two percent of the snaps for the first month of the year. He was dealing with, uh, I believe, wrist hand injury. Yep. And I mean, give me the review of Jackson Smith and Jigba. This was the wide receiver forty eight. Did not really come on in a meaningful way for fantasy towards the end of the year. It started to see them use him more, but it was a really nasty offense. It. He feels like everything just was held status quo of like his value. You what you whatever you thought about JSN coming into the NFL, you probably 
still think that. Like if you felt he was clearly the number one wide receiver, uh, I don't think that he – like he didn't cement it because he didn't come out and have a huge season, but he didn't – I didn't see anything on the field that took away from how I felt about JSN in the pre-draft process. Uh, so it's it, – it, it, you're still in a – wishful thinking though that things are going to change for Seattle with uh with Lockett and Metcalf still under contract next year something so, could something could happen with Lockett but as of right now you, you would think that JSN is just a slot wide receiver let me ask you this though because JSN was 63 for 628 and 4 okay it was 10 a catch okay Quentin Johnson was 38 for 431 and 2 11.3 a catch so it was it was not Right up to what Jackson Smith and Jigba produced, those aren't vastly different numbers, right. though. And they were used it, differently. Um, like I, if, I guess I'm just curious. Like, I think a lot of people look at the rookie season for Quentin Johnson and say that's a death knell, right? Like rookie wide receivers they don't produce, like it doesn't always go their way moving forward. I I wonder if that is like if if your opinion hasn't changed about JSN, is it going to not change again if this happens again next year? No, if if this is what happens next year, then yeah, you would certainly have to adjust. But he was, it, they lock it and crew. They stayed, you know, pretty healthy, so it wasn't a a ton of opportunity for JSN to really be the number two guy. And it, it just his season in totality, I, you know, over six hundred yards for fantasy purposes. That's bad, but for a rookie wide receiver, it's fine. It. it and it's not like where Quentin Johnston was the number two guy. Like that Mike Williams injury was very early. Huge was thrust into an opportunity that maybe he wasn't ready for, but he 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 failed in his opportunity where JSN to me didn't really fully get the, get the opportunity yet. Twenty nine of his sixty three receptions were behind the line of speed. Yeah, that's when you noted his yards per catch. I was going to say they were using so, him. And that's if, almost and 50% of all receptions were behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it, it's unacceptable for fantasy purposes. Obviously, there's going to be a change at Yeah, coordinator. that's Rondell Moore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the change of coordinator, if you if you haven't seen the clip of JSN talking about uh, – someone was asking for, for Bears fans, like, hey, what do you what do you think? We're, you know, we're grabbing your coordinator. You know, should they be happy? Oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And JSN was like, uh, is this live right now? <laughs> he's like, um, he, well, he's a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, whoa, he did not like the offensive scheming there. And I think that's a big part of it. He didn't look bad to me. So I would agree with, with Mike in the sense that like when what he did was okay. However, I've cooled a little bit on him. I thought, you know, he was a superstar and I don't know if he is or not yet, but I'm less bullish on you know, on that declaration, because my worry coming into this season was he wasn't going to get enough snaps. And yeah, the, the scheme was dumb and they used them behind the line of scrimmage and, and hopefully that changes, but he still got a ton of snaps. He averaged 64% of the snaps. There were, let's see here, there were six games where he was over 70% of the snaps. And here was his fantasy points playing 70 plus percent of snaps. 5.9 points, 6.8 points, 9.3, 6.8, 5.1, and 4.5. Like, that's really, 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 really disappointing. Uh, Yeah, and you don't know who the quarterback is. I is it Geno? We'll know in a few days. Right. Is it Justin Fields? Because Seattle's a top trade candidate for Justin Fields. You know, the, how would you feel if if Justin Fields landed in Seattle? I don't think you're feeling very good. No, because you've you're got not. multiple. You wouldn't feel good about any of those guys. If I'd feel Ju good about Justin Fields. Yeah, yeah. If Justin Fields Maybe. got traded to Seattle for DK Metcalf <laughs> and Tyler Lockett, I'd be I'd be fine with it. That would that would make a difference. Quentin Johnston. Um, <laughs> wouldn't that be the ultimate trade move to make as a GM? You want to prove that like. The, the quarterback isn't good, that, that Fields isn't going to have it, trade for the wide receivers. Oh, you're saying <laughs> give Fields nobody? Uh, yeah. Like take like, away his weapons exactly, in the trade? Just to prove that he's not going to come on and be this great quarterback. Like, oh, I, I, I would trade him to Seattle, but they've got these great wide receivers who look so good. Well, we talked about – that's very funny. That is very funny. Uh, uh, it kind of felt – yeah. Yeah, it felt like that – what was the Russell Wilson trade with 
with Denver, they lost Noah Fant, right, when he went over there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It felt like condemnation for Metcalf and Lockett when that happened. Quentin Johnston, 38 for 431 and 2. Um, first round yep. wide receivers with zero top 24 yes. finishes as a rookie since this, 2014. This is the list. The list is Josh Dotson. Uh, you can say the word bust after these. Okay. Uh, Josh you, Dotson. You, so you want to weigh in and say, were they an NFL bust? Yeah. Okay. So Josh Dotson. That's a that's a bust. Laquan Treadwell. That was a bust. Mike Williams? That's not a bust. Not a bust. Not a bust. John, uh, John Ross? Bust. bust. Nikhil Harry? Bust. Jalen Rager? Bust. bust. Um, say the next one. Quentin Johnson. I, I'll, I'll say this, though. <laughs> Guess what? Um... Mr. Jackson and Smith and Jigba wasn't far off of this. He had a QB. He had one one. I think he had two uh, wide receiver twenty four finishes and a wide receiver twelve. Sixteen. He had a, oh, 16. a sixteen, a twenty four, and a twenty four. Yeah. So I mean, he was not. He's sliding in there. Just saying. That's three something three be is better than zero. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I guess by the skin of his teeth, right? How far off was uh, Quentin? What were his big games? I will pull that up for you. Let's see. I do, I I just speaking to Quentin if Johnston's 28, oh. 25 and 31. That's not far from Jason. No, that's not far. So, look, dynasty-wise, but that's as a full-time player. That's the difference. Dynasty-wise, yeah, full-time player with backup quarterbacks though, Mike. Justin Herbert was gone. What when did Herbert get hurt? During the year. <laughs> <laughs> also, you say uh Herbert was hurt in week 14. I would maybe so, be trying to move on from Jason is all I'm saying in I, uh, Yeah, if you if you want to do that, I think you can still get tremendous value. Yeah, that that, that would be the time to So, he uh Herbert would have been around for the the Detroit game, the 38 to 41 loss. I'm if not you, saying If you look at weeks 4 through 13, okay, that's post Mike Williams and including Herbert, right? That's All right. I think those are the important games where you go, okay, what was his opportunity and what did he do with it? He played 66% of those snaps and his season-long pace. This is bad as it gets. Would have been a grand total of 408 yards on the season from Justin yeah. Herbert. Yeah. Fewer than yeah. 40 receptions. It was, it was awful. It was as bad as you can get. Yeah. It, it's terrible. Um you can't trade him. You have to hold him and hope it's better. That's yeah, your you the philosophy. You can't get can you get anything for him? For um, huge? You cannot. No. No, it's not actually. It's not allowed. Not the, allowed. The platforms aren't. I believe Laquan Treadwell is the only trade <laughs> candidate that you can get. Uh, but he does have Herbert moving forward. But if you try real hard, you could get a second. You just have to, like, keep at it? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Would you trade Quentin Johnston for a second rounder? I think the way you could do that is if you say, "Would you trade him for a third? And then when I say yes, you go, "That it was a second, right?" <laughs> right. And then if you I say, "Would you trade him?" Say yes. What you do is oh, you 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 message the person not in the system and say a third. They say yes, deal. Then you send the trade offer over. Yeah. With a two in there, there will be no problems. No problems. And then when they accept, and later they go, "Wait, wait, wait! I thought it was a three. You said, "Oh no, I I didn't like that compensation, so I sent that offer." You That's saw how it. you do it. Would you rather have? I mean, huge. We'll have Justin Herbert. Jason will have competition and no quarterback right now, so it's just worth a thought. Zay Flowers, seventy-seven for eight fifty-eight and five. Um, definitely showed flashes. Yeah, he had he had some stretches. Week twelve through seventeen, the wide receiver eleven points per game. Yeah, but Andrews was gone, and we you know. We saw him take step in. He was he was capable and able to step in into that role. I don't know where Zay Flowers is going to settle in long term in fantasy. He was the wide receiver twenty seven this year. Um, he's certainly their most capable player outside of Mark Andrews. I I can't like it's, I was never a a huge Bateman fan like in the in the pre draft process, but I still can't wrap my head around how bad he's like Bateman is well if you go awful. watch if you go watch the tape from the uh the divisional game dude was getting open all yeah, the time he was he was not getting targets there was a disconnect with there him was and, and and um like if you had to take Zay Flowers here's the question for you the next three years of Zay Flowers 
and then average out where you think he finishes. Where do you settle in with Zay Flowers? I settle in as like the wide receiver 25, 24, something like that. Yeah, I'm the same. Okay, so not much different than this past year. Nope. So you're talking maybe a guy that's more PPR oriented, 80 receptions, 1,000 yards, he'll have, but not scoring a ton? Yeah, not scoring a ton. And he'll have a, a couple weeks where I mean, you saw it with the, the broken play in the playoffs of Zay and, and the week before against San Francisco, like, if I'm remembering that right. But Zay Flowers is very – he's capable of hitting the big play. But it will be just a few spike weeks here and there. I brought him up on the Dynasty podcast about a month ago of someone that I'm I'm willing to listen to offers of for Zay Flowers. And it's not that – it's not because he's going to be bad. Wide receiver 25-ish is in a Dynasty league. That's very useful for Yeah, you're going to start that player. It's just – what is the opinion of, of other managers in your league about Zay Flowers? Do they see what he did and see the growth potential from a year one player? Which that I, that is possible for Flowers to be this good as a rookie and, and keep uh, keep getting better. But he feels like a player who will be locked into that wide receiver two, wide receiver three fringe, and his value could be higher than that right now. Would you rather have Jordan Addison? Oh, man. I would rather have Jordan Addison. Addison was 70 for 9, 11, and 10. So 10 touchdowns. Um, finished at wide receiver 21. That's what, that's how I lean. I'd rather have Addison than Zay Flowers. Uh, we talked about him on the wide receiver truth part two episode. If you want to go back and listen to that in a little bit more detail. But he showed, obviously, a, a ton of flashes when you're yeah, scoring threat. Yes. Uh, double digit times. And... Uh, you know, TBD on the quarterback situation, but Jordan Addison certainly had a great rookie season. Jonathan Mingo caught 43 of 85 targets. Jonathan Mingo is so disappointing. He didn't score. He was drafted very highly, second round pick, and um, it didn't work. No, it did chicken, not work. egg. Yeah. You know, they always home. say the chicken or the egg. Is it, I mean, maybe both just I, suck. Yeah. Some, sometimes. <laughs> It's not mutually exclusive. This is just both. I I think, I think that the general manager of the Panthers had a bad draft. Yeah, Jaden Reed finished at wide receiver twenty three, sixty four for seven ninety three and eight. Became a go to wide receiver for this team. Ran the football, scored twice on the ground. From week ten on, he was the wide receiver nine. I love Jaden Reed. Uh, there was a question for the mailbag show that we didn't get to on Tuesday that said, pick a pair of pickled pecker wide receivers or something. Mm -hmm. That's um, what it was. It's Jaden Reed and something else. That, right. That's my answer for sure. Um, it, it doesn't mean he's like everything. You know, He's limited in his skill set, uh, but he is just – he's going to be part of the game plan for that head coach for as long as he's there like Debo is in San Francisco, you're going to build game plans around Jaden Reed who makes plays. Yeah, so my my concern with Reed, first of all, he looked really good. He proved like, he is an NFL player. He's here to stay. He's going to be valuable for the Packers. And for fantasy purposes, we know he can get it done. But he did get it done almost always when Christian Watson wasn't there. In the games, you know, he, he was uh, – Christian Watson was out for seven games, um, in for nine games, and you go from 7.1 targets to 4.8 targets, um, down from 60 yards a game to 40 yards per game. And obviously it's a rookie season, so, you know, he's still figuring it out, but it did seem like, you know, when all three guys are healthy, and maybe that's a, you know, a fool's errand to think Christian Watson's ever going to be healthy um, – but when all three guys were healthy, it's it, it's hard for me to believe that any of them will be consistent. Watson or Reed or Dobbs or Wicks. I would rather have Jaden Reed than Zay Flowers moving wow. forward. Oh, moving, wow. moving forward. Um, I think that's pretty hot. He's a, he's that, a bet. I you know, know you. And obviously he finished in the top 24 as a rookie. Um, 
establishing himself in a depth chart that goes well beyond three. I mean, uh, Dontavian Wicks is part of that conversation. Yeah. And you saw other players that come in and make a mark and you had, you know, Musgrave and um, Kraft and, mm -hmm. and like, to me, Jaden Reed's just going to be built into your game plan. It's not going to be like, if you asked me the same question that we did about flowers and you said, what is he going to, why does she were 20? You know, why does she ever 18? I don't think he's a top 12 type of finished guy. I mean, he, he looked good. He finished the season strong, which is always what you want to see. You know, you want to see as, as the rookies go along, are they getting better down the stretch? You know, you saw that with Amon Ross St. Brown, his rookie season just catching fire at the end. And, and you know, there's questions as to whether or not it was because his opportunities were higher without Christian Watson or whether he just leveled up. But I, I know that I can speak to while watching games with Andy, the amount of times Andy just gushed over what he saw from Jaden Reed. He's, yeah, and he's not on any of my teams. Yeah, <laughs> so my just, love is unbiased. He's it's, genuine. This is our day after Valentine's show, and so this sure. this episode's about love. Jaden Reed Good is point. extremely difficult because he was, he, d despite all his greatness, he was still a slot wide receiver. Like if two wide receivers, it's not going to be him. Like it will be, it will be Dobbs and it'll be Christian Watson. You saw it play out in the in the playoff game where Jaden Reed. I think Jaden Reed was catchless in the first. Uh, playoff game I'll, I'll double check that so that that's that's why it's so difficult because when he plays he's an excellent player and can be a focal point but then there's just times where the the, the focal point is actually he's not on the field because he's not in this package sure yeah and he dealt with that stupid chest injury over and over again at yeah, the end did. of the year that he was playing through Rashi Rice uh Tate he's, Dell dude R Rice is extremely difficult too Super Bowl champion Yes, he is. Uh, he took advantage of, of every opportunity that he was given, so he didn't fail at any point, right? Like there wasn't – it wasn't like huge where it's like, okay, step up, and then you disappear. Like he became their primary receiving option. The hardest part with Rice is whether you you go sell that to enticed two-time Super Bowl you know, fans of Patrick Mahomes – Realizing that this team is going to potentially make a significant splash at the wide receiver position, I, I wonder what Rashi Rice's future is going to be. If you, if I told you, it's Pittman or Evans or yeah, you know those type of guys getting here in he Kansas City. He is a he's a screen guy too. He's a yak guy. Yeah, he's a yak guy. Where that can uh, he didn't if, show if, up in the Super Bowl really. Yeah, it, it's like when you call someone a yak guy, it almost feels insulting because you're taking away well you can't do this skill set but he I just he is his route tree is not complete and yet he still managed to, to have a strong rookie you season. know who he feels like who you got he feels like um the way they were using McCall Hardman a few years ago but where he catches it <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of that's what a lot I mean literally if you go back and watch McCall Hardman in Kansas City some of the screen game plays but Rice is running them properly. It, it, it's like, you know, Hardman didn't know he won the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, blacked out, he said. Wow. Did you not know that? I, I did see that. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's insane. But Rice was, he did everything that was asked of him. The question is merely, will they ask him more of him in the future? Or will they be content with this and utilize different outside wide receivers yeah. that aren't named? Because they went downfield to MVS. They go downfield to Watson. Like, they have choices to, they have opportunities to put Rice in there, and they're choosing Watson and Hardman and these, you know, these type of players. Yeah, and and you know they they have to have more than one wide receiver on the field. But I, I don't want to discount the fact that he's a rookie and he can get better. You know, his route tree is not complete. And now that Andy, we know Andy Reid is coming back. Obviously, if they go out, they're going to show us what their actions are. If they go out and they get Michael Pittman or go out and get Mike Evans or try to make a a splash add to the wide receiver room then, yeah, Rice is – I mean, you will have wished you sold. Given that they didn't spend on Tyree Kill, they don't have – you know, they, they, Patrick costs a lot of money and they've just won back-to-back -back Super Bowls with a hodgepodge of wide receivers, I would be surprised if they do go out and spend top dollar on a free agent. And if Rice comes into his sophomore season with a great head coach, the best quarterback of all time, and he's better – and utilized more. I mean, you know, Tyreek Hill had a great rookie year, but 
he was nowhere near as good as yeah, a route runner and as involved in the offense and those type of things um, as he was after that rookie season. So I I find myself a little bit more bullish on the ability for Rice to become the type of receiver that we would prefer him to be. It feels it feels a little bit like without Tyreek Hill. This category of wide receiver for Kansas City thus far has been just a scary one, almost like the old, um, you know, Patriots backfield situations where, mm -hmm. you know, is, is this offense and the way Andy Reid wants to run things ever going to really allow for one wide receiver to be, you know, a dominant alpha, or is it always going to be a complementary set of players and you know, Kelsey's involved? So I, I think Reid gets the most out of his players. And so I think he got the most out of Reed. This was all Reed could he do He got this the season. least out of Kadarius Tony. Well, uh, that, I think he got the most out of I think <laughs> that was the most you could get out of Kadarius Tony, which is impressively bad. Let's talk about Tank Dell, Marvin Mims, and a handful of other guys before we shut things down. Uh, Tank Dell, 75 targets, 47 for 709 and 7. He was wide receiver three for a four-week span. He finished at 15 in points per game. The unfortunate, terrible injury while blocking a Damian Pierce rushing attempt. Um, but a third-round pick, someone C.J. Stroud is building a rapport with for the long term. I think we're all really excited about Tank Dell's potential. Yep. He's going to get deep shots. He's going to get uh, important third-down targets. He's definitely... The question for people will just be Tank Dell or Nico Collins in drafts next year. I'm on the Tank Dell side if the recovery goes well, but I think it's close, and I don't blame anybody going you know best value or whatever the case may be. Uh, really impressive rookie season. Yeah, from weeks 9 through 12, he was the wide receiver. Three over 20 points a game. A ridiculous almost 11 targets over 90 yards per game in that time. And not behind the line of scrimmage, little Jackson right. Smith and Jigba yeah, targets. He, he, was, he, was, he was not used like – a tiny little gadget guy. He was used like a like a true number well, one wide receiver. Like Deshaun Jackson. Like Jackson's right. a tiny guy. Yeah. Go throw him around and, and try to cover this little bumblebee. What was really, really surprising, um, because it doesn't usually happen, but was so awesome, based on his size, his little tiny itty bitty body, they <laughs> used tank, Jason. They, that's right. They used him just like Tank Dell in college. The, I know that's crazy that they would utilize a guy who, you know, in college right. was 90 for 1,329 yards and 12 touchdowns, and then his final season, 109 receptions, 1,400 yards, and 17 touchdowns. Like, that really does. Deshaun Jackson is a very similar physical yeah, that's situation. Yeah, he's, he's going to be great, and I think all three of us are super in on Tank Dell next year. Uh, we are going in order of where these players were drafted. Marvin Mims, uh, you're going to have to just hope and pray right yeah, now. Yeah, maybe next year. Um, he showed flashes on special teams. Jalen Hyatt and Cedric Tillman, third-round draft picks. Didn't do much this year. Maybe next year. Yeah, maybe next year. Josh Downs had a a small what, stretch. What a he weird just, season. He just fooled us for a minute. Well, 68 for 771, yeah. and then he got injured. All right. Um, the, so his, we'll see. the ending number of 771 yards is shocking. He seems like he's either going to be a compliment to a, a returning Michael Pittman, or he may have a uh, a bigger role. Yeah, I mean so, he, had, he had a he had a four game stretch where he was on fire, and he'll have a different quarterback. Uh, Michael Wilson, pretty disappointing for Arizona. Couldn't they'll, catch the ball sometimes. Yeah, they'll they'll be bringing in. Uh, star wide receiver yeah there were some people on twitter talking about oh go trade for michael wilson i'm like no uh, that's not my opinion I don't, I don't think my i think michael wilson is the perfect um juan jennings for a team sure i don't think he has the potential to be like a monster wide receiver too it'll be there'll be a big name coming in this year for arizona and maybe another one in free agency trey tucker was a third round pick he flashed many times for las vegas so you know he was one of those players much better for NFL than for fantasy predictability. Dontavian Wicks. Definitely flashed. 39 for 581. That's crazy. Four touchdowns. Um, interesting name moving forward. How upset are the Chargers? 
that they didn't get Dontavian Wicks and instead of instead first round huge. Huge. I think they're upset for lots of reasons, to be honest. <laughs> Who's next? Who's next? Uh, Parker Washington. Oh wait, no, this guy five forty two. Okay, so Puka Nakua, man. Only 105 receptions, only 1,486 yards, only six touchdowns. Uh, just kind of a mediocre <laughs> wide receiver four finish. The the conversation for Puka, to me, honestly, is just how high do you take him in a in a startup? In a dynasty startup? Yeah. <sighs> Man. Dynasty I, startup. I can tell you where, consensus-wise where he is. I've got Puka at, at my wide receiver six. Yeah, I thought you loved him, Jason. I I'm moving him up. <laughs> <laughs> I got him at thirteen. I, overall, or at, not wide receiver thirteen, or do you have him at wide receiver thirteen? No, overall. Oh, okay. Overall, wide. <laughs> overall, yeah, otherwise, I mean, who knows what is going to happen here? Yeah, we're going to have our first fight. Mm -hmm. But it's it it's unbelievable to go from a fifth round pick to be easy, easily easily no matter what the argument i think people would say top 10 wide receivers just how high how high up do unbelievable you go? yeah i mean we've talked so much about him especially on wide receiver truth episode yep. so um other players that flash briefly trey palmer uh of tampa bay at perry for new orleans trey palmer is an interesting name I, it doesn't need a whole bunch of conversation analysis because you need things to shake out right now but if mike evans lose or lose as if he leaves and it just – it feels – no inside information, but feels like the team is, like, really disappointed with Chris Godwin at where he is now. Trey Palmer had a ton of college production. Doesn't have draft capital or anything like that, but he just – he is a name to just keep in the back of your head. Is maybe, like, if you're doing a trade and you can get a Palmer as a throw-in, I would do it. Breaking news. What? I mean, it's not it's not breaking because we oh. we recorded this on Monday. Yeah, but like Mitch Trubisky is a free agent, guys. Oh man! Wow! Wow! Yeah, it's a big deal. Number yep. uh, what? Number two overall pick? That well, trade it up. Trade, trade it up. up yeah, to yeah. The number so I'm two. so sorry. <laughs> Demario Douglas uh, was very good. Six round pick for New England. Pop had a good chance, especially uh, good with opportunity. The quarterback play. All right, rookie tight ends. Dalton Kincaid was the first off the board. Um, he had a, a hot streak, week 7 through 11. Was the tight end three during that stretch. This was when Dawson Knox was out. And then when Dawson Knox returned, it slowed back down again. But 73 for 6, 73 and 2. I'm, that's a nice year, 91 you know, for, targets. For a rookie tight end, that is a fantastic season. He showed enough to have full confidence that he'll be more and more involved. Uh, he's going to have a, a very good career and hopefully breaks out into being a top fantasy tight end so yeah. we have another really valuable asset. If he finishes the tight end five next year, you would be? Uh, I would be happy. I would be happy with that, and I, and I think he will. Sam Laporta finishes the number one tight end. <laughs> Second round draft pick, 86 wait, for wait, eight, The number one rookie tight end? Yeah. No, Jason. <laughs> He broke all the rules. All the rules you've set for them. The number one tight end. Yeah. Outscoring Travis Kelsey. Yeah. And he'll be the number one off the board next year in fantasy. Yes, he will. So, uh, unbelievable year for Laporta. You you heard us talk about him in the Truth episode. Um, so, we won't dig in too deep. If you want to hear more Laporta breakdown, you can go back to the tight end Truth episode. Do not sleep on Michael Mayer. Michael Mayer no. is, a, is a very good player, and just because Las Sam, Vegas Raiders, Las Vegas way. Raiders uh, rookie Guitarist. tight end. <laughs> um, look, just because Sam Laporta did what no one else has ever been able to do uh, at tight end, don't. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, no, it was a good, it was a good yeah, joke. Just, it was a good joke. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, but, <laughs> uh, but Michael Mayer. Is really really talented. It is normal for rookie tight ends to not do much. Yes. I mean, look at Frar. look at Trey McBride. Frar. Trey, oh, Mc, Trey yeah. McBride was you know his rookie season was irrelevant. Yes. Michael Mayer's rookie season was irrelevant. Don't don't sleep on them. In fact, this is where like I don't like drafting rookie tight ends in dynasty, but I sure like trading for second year tight ends. So go kick the tires on Michael Mayer. So are you, are you trading for Luke Musgrave or the Schoon Man? Luke's not the schoon not the Schoon Man. Maker? Um, I know his he dealt with injury, but I do think that it was kind of established that he is the backup tight end now. 
Tucker Craft had a nice uh, run for Green Bay. That's interesting moving forward. Musgrave, Craft probably ruin each other. And then Davis Allen. I want to mention him in the fifth round. Had a okay. little stretch for the Rams uh, when Higby was out. Could be the future of the, of the tight end position for Los Angeles. Pay attention to him. Pay attention to Darnell Washington a yeah, little bit. And just in, in Pittsburgh as well in the third round. Just the reminder because I had – it's like, oh, Higby got hurt. Yeah, Higby tore his ACL. So See? He's an older tight end. Uh, oh, wait. He tore his ACL and MCO? Okay, so that's a but more, yeah, he seems unlikely to be back for the more start of the ligaments season. being reported right as we speak. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep. Mm -hmm. I uh, that's it though. Check out the ligament tracker. We do have a full injury report though in the in the uh, UDK. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll close things down by reminding you to head over to ultimatedraftkit.com, and uh, next week we'll get into some shocking stats from 2023, and some of our classic episodes are coming up, like the coaching changes episode, as we uh, recap all of the moves that teams have made to try to fix everything with like hiring somebody. But like that always works. Right? Oh, it, every hire was so good. Uh, 10 things to remember episode coming up as well. So check it out and make sure you subscribe, Spotify, Apple, YouTube, wherever you're listening, drop us a review if you can. And uh, we're on Twitter at the FF ballers. Again, ultimate draft for the dynasty pass. That is it. We made it through. And uh, go back to Monday, and go to my <laughs> go to my profile on Twitter, twittercom Holloway for a live feed image of Jason. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.